Yes, Olympus DAO and its copycats are scams, whose very structure is designed to move money from your pockets to its founders. In this video, I'm going to tell you how Olympus DAO does that and why you should avoid them. At the end, I'll walk you through some counter arguments that proponents of Olympus DAO use to claim legitimacy of this protocol, and I'll provide you counters to their counter arguments. If you make it to the end of the video, I'll also send you a completely free NFT just for being a supporter of this channel. Let's get started. The mechanics of Olympus DAO are very confusing. In fact, I've yet to see a protocol with so much interest that so few people actually understand the mechanics of. This confusing nature is what has allowed this scam to hide in plain sight and grow to over a $4 billion market cap last November. So what is Olympus DAO actually supposed to be for in the first place? What is their purpose? The main goal, as stated by their anonymous founder, Zeus, is to become a reserve currency in a medium of exchange. In other words, they want to replace the US dollar for the crypto community. Their whole selling point is that they have a treasury of different assets that backs this reserve currency, mainly stablecoins and ETH. This treasury of assets is supposed to serve as a floor price to the value of OM. At current levels, the stablecoin treasury sits at around $220 million. If you include the volatile assets, the treasury is at over $500 million. Where did this money come from? directly out of Olympus DAO's users' pockets. The Olympus DAO protocol has two core functions for users, bonding and staking. Bonding is where users can trade real, tangible assets that have value, such as US dollar stablecoins or Ethereum, for OM, Olympus DAO's native token. They deposit these real assets and then receive OM a few days later at a small discount to market value. While users can profit by bonding if the price stays the same, which is a big if as we'll get to later, the real reason so many people are after OM is to be able to stake it. Olympus DAO's main draw is the absolutely insane APYs that they offer for staking their OM token. This is where we get to the first part of the scam. At this point, it's important to remember that OM tokens can literally be created out of thin air, which is exactly what is happening in the staking process. These insane APYs are basically meaningless to users because the amount of OM tokens that a user gains from staking is generally equal on a percentage basis to the supply growth of OM. Let's say that the reserve treasury's assets are represented by a pizza. If the Olympus style treasury pizza has eight slices, they're promising people that they'll double their amount of slices if they stake them. But instead of creating a bigger pizza, they actually just cut all the slices in two. People are left with the exact same percentage of ohm that they started with. So then you might be wondering, how were some people able to make so much money by staking ohm? When ohm tokens are trading above their treasury asset value, new users are coming into the system by overpaying for their ohm in order for the opportunity to stake. For example, they might be trading $100 worth of DAI or Ethereum in order to buy OM that is backed up by only $20 worth of DAI or Ethereum. This is like people who really want a slice of the OM pizza giving five slices of another pizza just for that one slice of OM pizza. The crazy part is OM just incorporates these new slices of pizza into their OM pizza, growing the pizza overall. So the slices are increasing in size from new users coming in, but getting cut in half by the staking protocol. The pizza does grow, but the only way that this new person can make money is for more people to do the same trade in the future. This creates a classic pyramid scheme dynamic in which the money coming in from the new users directly benefits the earlier users. Of course, like all pyramid schemes, eventually the supply of new users dries up and the last ones to join in are left holding the bag. So even if this was a pyramid scheme, is it really that bad? Many perfectly legal pyramid schemes exist, and even proponents of Bitcoin say that in some ways it resembles a Ponzi, requiring more and more people to believe in it and buy in in order to maintain the price. The founder of Ohm himself admits to the Ponzi-style nature of Olympus Tau in an interview with Bankless Podcast. I'll link that down below. But the Ponzi part of Olympus Tau isn't even the bad part. The main problem with Olympus Tau, and the whole reason why this scam pisses me off so much in the first place, is the P-Ohm token. The P-Ohm token is a token that was given to the founders and early investors of Olympus DAO that can be exchanged along with one US dollar for one Ohm token. By itself, I have no problem with this. 
Early founders and investors deserve to be rewarded for taking the risk of creating something new. NPOM somewhat represents stock options that are commonly given to founders and employees at startup tech companies. The problem lies in the vesting schedule. The POM tokens vest in such a way that the founders will always maintain control of 11.8% of the total outstanding OM tokens. The pseudonymous founder, Zeus, claims that this vesting schedule aligns incentives with the community, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. Going back to the pizza example, this is like cutting everybody else's slices in smaller and smaller fractions as the pizza grows without changing their own slices. This is the entire purpose of the Olympus Stout Protocol. Lure people in with the promise of extreme financial returns while siphoning money off for the founders every time a user joins. They're inflating users' own tokens to infinity so that they represent a smaller and smaller portion of the treasury while maintaining their own stake. If you've seen the movie The Social Network, this dilution is actually the same exact trick that Mark Zuckerberg used to screw over his co-founder. You issued 24 million new shares of stock. You were told that if new investors came along- How much were your shares diluted? How much were his? What was Mr. Zuckerberg's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Mr. Moskowitz's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Sean Parker's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Peter Thiel's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. And what was your ownership share diluted down to? 0.03%. Now, I've specifically avoided talking about some of the most common counterarguments to the scam nature of Olympus DAO because in my opinion, all of these arguments are specifically crafted to distract from the core mechanics of the protocol, which I've just outlined. But let's go through them one by one now to see if they have any validity. The first major counterargument is the stated purpose of Olympus DAO. Proponents say that they are a real product trying to become a reserve currency. First of all, I think that there are serious questions of the need for the kind of reserve currency that they are claiming. We already have decentralized stablecoins such as DAI, FRAX, and US Terra. And if you don't want the coin to be dependent on the US dollar, then we have decentralized alternatives such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Instead, Olympus DAO is just combining these two options and calling it something revolutionary. And not only that, but they are selling it at a premium. So while there isn't even a global need for a reserve currency like OM in the first place, Let's give them the benefit of the doubt, say there is, and move on to the next counter argument. Why does Ohm deserve to trade above its reserve value in the first place? Wouldn't a coin that represents a basket of other coins trade equal to that value? The founder says that this should be valued like a business, and it doesn't make sense to value a business by the cash that they have in their bank account. That all businesses that grow have a premium on top of that cash value. While what he says is true, and does make sense for almost every other business, the sole purpose of OM is to be a reserve currency. It is ridiculous to claim that something whose literal purpose is to be tied to the value of its underlying assets should trade at a premium. In the case of DAI, a decentralized stablecoin, the value of one DAI trades at a 50% discount to the value of its reserves. Now is the time where some people may bring up the biggest red herring of all. The fact that a part of Olympus DAO's reserves are actually earning money by being a liquidity provider for various OM token pairs. I have three points on this. First, the idea that liquidity mercenaries in DeFi protocols being a problem is very real. And Olympus Dow's idea of owning its own liquidity is new and interesting. I think that them talking about this very real problem is the reason why Olympus Dow wasn't laughed out of the room in the first place. But the nature in which Olympus Dow implements their solution does not benefit the users in the long term at all. While owning their liquidity does produce fees for the protocol, it still doesn't deserve a premium to the underlying value of the tokens in the position. If there is an LP position on the ETH OM pair with $50 in OM and $50 in ETH, literally anyone who wants to create this position for themselves can do that with $100. No premium necessary. Finally, it's important to remember where these fees are actually coming from. All of these fees that Olympus Dow is generating from the trading of Ohm are coming from the very users of Olympus DAO, the same people that the founders are stealing money from in the first place. The final argument that many Ohm proponents like to bring out is Olympus Pro and the funding that Olympus DAO has recently started 
for small protocols. The bottom line on this topic is that this basically consists of Olympus bribing other protocols to have them include their own token in their offerings. Imagine you are a protocol developer of a new blockchain game and Ohm says they'll pay you $1 million if you include Ohm as a currency option for that game. Of course you'll take the money. Even if Olympus DAO used its treasury to invest in seed projects and actually received ownership, kind of like a venture capital firm, it's important to remember how they got the funds to invest in the first place. They got them directly from users. Not by promising that they'll be good at investing, but by luring them with fake APYs and by siphoning off a significant portion of the capital as it comes in. Now, I know that this video will be controversial, especially with the diehard Olympus DAO supporters. As you can see, I'm a small channel trying to bring you deep research on DeFi protocols to give you the knowledge that you need to succeed in decentralized finance. If that is something you value, like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do that and comment subscribed below along with your Ethereum address, I'll send you a commemorative NFT on Polygon. Just remember it's a good idea to create a new Ethereum address for NFTs so that people can't link your actual Ethereum account to your identity. Also, this NFT is completely worthless. In the future, I might tie it to a specific role in our channel's Discord or something like that. But really, it's just for bragging rights to say that you were an early supporter. Thanks for the support and I'll see you in the next video.